wild enough to buy my first car, I'm coming here to Big Ralph's used car lot. Not just because he's my uncle, but because he's got the super greatest used cars in the entire world. Dad says I've already increased sales by a full half percent. Nice work, Angela. Angela's found her biggest role yet, polluting the environment with her TV commercial. It'll be even worse when she tries out for the lead in the school play. Not if I get the lead, and I will, if I can find a play about vampires. Aha! Uh -huh. Vampires, goblins, and other legends. In fair Ingrid's realm, riches were balm, but the young princess knew not happiness, betrothed to the evil troll Prince Moigan. Marry me, Ingrid! No! Never! No! You don't have a choice anymore, do you, my queen? <laughs> Gosh! Oh, you found it! I really must have that book. Destiny and peril throughout my life. When will it end this constant strife? Volume based, I can forswear this horrid fate I wrongly bear. Class, this year we've hired a drama teacher for your school play. Please welcome Ms. Larkin. Hello, Hello Ms. Larkin. I look forward to working with all of you. Now, have you come up with an idea for a play? I saw this cool movie. Hang gliders patrolling the Earth. Um, well, <laughs> it's a play we want, not a movie. The Littlest Vampire, about a vampire girl and how she saves the planet. <clears throat> uh, perhaps our resident thespian, Angela Smith, has a suggestion. Doctor in the Woods, a young woman suffers a hiking accident and is rescued by a forest ranger. Hmm. Remember, Miss Larkin, there isn't much time. We're on stage in a week. I'd like an old play, like a fairy tale. Mm-hmm. I've got it. Destiny's Peril. It's a modern version of an old troll tale. Ingrid, a plucky young Harris, runs away from a movie star who wants to marry her for her money. But she runs out of gas, gets lost in a national park, and is rescued by a forest ranger. Auditions are this afternoon. You're a medical student and a forest ranger? I am, uh, changed careers. Bye for now. Uh, that's fine. You can step down. Well, no doubt about it, Mona here was the most original. Oh, please, Miss Larkin. I am Ingrid. I know it. Have you seen my TV work? TV work? You mean that commercial for your uncle's used car lot? Uh, they're European imports? Uh, given our tight schedule, Miss Larkin, we must consider Angela's experience. Yippee, yippee, Hollywood, here I come! Mona, uh, you could play the talking bush. That would be interesting. Uh, try again, Angela. From, oh, where am I? Oh, where am I? Is this but a dream? Uh, Angela, what's that thing in your hand? It's just my tension ball, Miss Larkin. It helps me concentrate. <laughs> Continue, George. Ingrid, you seem to be mending. What does that mean? It's the magic of the play. <sighs> About finding your true self and escaping the perils of the past. <laughs> You cannot escape me, Ingrid! Not now! Not ever! I've waited 700 years! <laughs> Continue, Angela. Oh, dear sir, this is my plight. Destiny in peril throughout my life. Um, uh, destiny in peril throughout my life. Uh, line, please! When will it end this constant strife? Volume-based, I can forswear! This horrid fate I wrongly bear! 
Yes! <gasps> oh, play it like that. It's quite inspiring. Huh. Why don't we continue tomorrow? Miss Larkin, what happened to Ingrid in the old fairy tale? <sighs> she ran away to the new world. You mean she could be here? Well, it's just a fairy tale. Bye now. The troll fairy tale was in that library book I gave to Miss Larkin. And you think it's got something to do with her? I've got to see if I can borrow it to find out. Hmm. This definitely needs investigating. Mona, you're not thinking those cute little troll things. That's exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> Ingrid will be mine! <laughs> the time is ripe, and none shall deny us! Not even you, little snipes! <laughs> oh! Children, were you looking for me? Ms. Larkin, can I borrow your library book? Yes, of course. It's an electron case in the gym, but do be careful with it. Yes! Hidden in the ancient play, Crescendo Innuendo, is an incantation that transformed Princess Ingrid into a troll. Um, is that good or bad? It's the same lines I read at the rehearsal, and Miss Larkin spoke them in the library. Wait, there's more. It looks like Destiny's Peril is Crescendo Innuendo. And, whoa, listen to this. The curse shall be forever lifted if the incantation be recited by the chosen one who is pure of heart. That's you, Mona. That's why Miss Larkin wanted you for the part. But beware. If during the play these words are not spoken in a pure manner, Ingrid and all around her will be trolls forever. And those crucial lines are Angela's. Mona, you got to say those lines. <laughs> Sit still. I've got to learn Angela's part so I can step in tomorrow and say these lines. That is, if I can think up a way to replace her. One last thing. Tonight's the play. The real thing. If any of you forget a line, Mona, our talking bush here, will whisper it. <laughs> I brought my Zapparama. Good. It's time for Operation Eject Angela. Hi, Angela. I... we want to wish you the very best. How very sweet of you. I'm expecting several encores. Angela, remember those great silent screen actresses? You'd get rave reviews by miming the part about volume-based I can forswear. And miss my chance to bring the house down? Forget it. Angela, look at this. It's the latest in theater fashion. The mummy wrap. Oh, please. Angela, this super long-lasting drawbreaker will keep your throat from feeling dry for up to three hours. Oh, no! Out, out, out! I have to rehearse my lines. I can't believe it didn't work. Who can resist a super drawbreaker? Talk about a cliffhanger. By the way, where's Fang? Uh, who took my tension ball? Angela! Whatever is the matter? Someone took it. I can't concentrate. Uh, I can't say my lines. Huh? Uh, oh, I'm going to my dressing room. Uh, Angela, listen. Uh, we've got a tennis ball. Please come out. No, I want my good luck tension ball. <laughs> Angela, if you're not out in two minutes, we'll start without you? No tension ball. No show. Mona, quickly. Go change. Yes! It's just a prop. Oh. And who might you be out here all alone in the woods? Next act is the big moment. <laughs> here am I! Mighty Prince Morgan, whom none shall deny. Wear this amulet around your neck. You will surrender forevermore. And all within are doomed. No! Save me from the depths of death! 
Atmosphere. If it lands on Earth, it's called a meteorite. It's falling towards us! It's coming right for us! It landed right in Mrs. Brierson's backyard. Hey, Charlie, wait for us! Wow! to find a real meteorite? Hmm. <sighs> huh? Hey, kids! Breakfast time! Scrambled zombie brains with glasses of fresh orange ogre blood. Uh, I better get going. I have to get this meteorite home. But you love my dad's breakfasts. That was before I had a meteorite. Huh? My vampire senses are tingling like a funny bone. It's like that meteorite has some kind of hold over Charlie. I haven't seen Charlie in days. I went over, I phoned, I emailed him, nothing. Me too. And now I know why. Look. Local boy finds small meteorite. While finding a meteorite is rare, it does happen and is certain to get some attention from the world of astronomy. Maybe he's gonna be famous. I bet that meteorite has strange powers, and it's got some kind of hold over Charlie's brain. Do you think it's that bad? We better get him away from that space rock. He's got his meteorite with him. Hey! I got someone who wants to talk to you. The Great Polonius! The Great Magician! You probably know I'm the greatest magician on the planet, but did you know I'm also an amateur astronomer? I want that meteorite you found. I'll pay you anything for it. No way! It's mine! Mere humans! Hand it over, or I'm going to make your little planet Earth disappear! And you, with it! No! You've been warned! Look out! Oh! Oh! oh, sorry about that. The brake slipped. That's okay. You were under the control of a very powerful alien magician. Whatever you say, kid. You're in big trouble, Charlie. It was Polonius who had that ice cream cart attack us. I don't think so. The guy's brake slipped. That's all. You gotta go. I have important meteorite research to do at the library. Are you coming to Polonius' last show tonight? Free tickets. I'm too busy. See you later. Charlie sure changed. I don't like the looks of this. Free tickets and he doesn't jump at them? We better check out this Polonius. There's his limousine. 
Right. He's got to be in the theater. No, I told you I'm tired of doing these magic shows. But after tonight, this world will irrevocably change. My greatest disappearing act yet. Especially if I can get that kid's meteorite. I'm going to make this whole planet disappear. Tonight will be the last show they will ever see. <laughs> Whoops! Out of here! Huh? Who's here? He's gonna make the whole planet disappear tonight! But why does he want Charlie's meteorite? Maybe it'll make him even more powerful. We have to warn Charlie. We're gonna need that man with us at the show tonight. <laughs> Why did you cover my meteorite? You can't stare at it anymore. It's changing you. And we need your help. Polonius is an alien magician, and he plans on doing the ultimate disappearing act tonight at a show. What kind of disappearing act? He's going to make our whole planet disappear. What? The whole planet? That's impossible. I don't believe it. You two are probably just upset because I have the meteorite, and you're jealous. And that's him. We're not ready to face him yet. Come on. Hey, kids! Wait for me! I want to talk to you about your meteorite! <laughs> your world is doomed! But if you give me the meteorite, we can make a little deal. Abracadabra, and there's one more rabbit in the world. Shh. Oh, um, voila. So, you're not that excited about your last show. Just got to make a few little adjustments to my disappearing box. Tonight's going to be the greatest disappearing act I ever do. <laughs> I can't believe we'll be losing all this because of astronomy. Well, anyway, less than an hour until showtime. before I disintegrate your world? I don't think so, Polonius. <laughs> Gee, and I only had it on stun. Looking for <sighs> me? Give me that meteorite now. N -n no chance, Mr. Magic. Fool, your world will soon be history, and the meteorite won't be of any use to you. Polonius, give up! You're surrounded! <laughs> <laughs> 
You fools will never learn. Polonius, you don't want me to lose my temper. And for my next trick, two floating fools about to disappear in my disappearing box. And look, no strings. <laughs> Looks like this is it, Mona. Zatman, help! I can't move. Hey, Polonius! Catch! <laughs> Zatman, you gave up your meteorite for us. All rocks from outer space are the same. And anyway, I had to babysit it all the time. It was driving me crazy. <laughs> You're telling me. But who are you? And, and where is Polonius? Oh, um, he's gone. Already? Huh. Oh, well, hope he does like he said and goes back to university to study astronomy and meteorites. Oh, uh, where he's going, he'll be studying astronomy, all right. Hey, you kids want this box? He won't be using it anymore, and you seem to have a knack for magic yourself. Yeah! It could be our gateway to the stars, or even... Ah, look out! On second thought, let's just go get a milkshake. 